So the course that we're teaching is to some degree structured around a single internet search. We're going to come back to this example repeatedly as we go through the class and use it to motivate and to explain and to justify how certain parts of the internet work. Why are we discussing search? Search is something you guys do all the time. So for example, I'm going to launch this really interesting search. I forgot who, you know, I'm a Bachelorette fan. I forgot who won the Bachelorette last year, right? Obviously, I remember, you know, who won JoJo's Heart this year. Um, so there we go. I can actually go to Google, and Google will tell me, all oh, right, uh, Caitlin uh, chose Sean B. All right, that was, that was quite touching, actually. I remember that now. Um, so this is something that we do all the time. And it connects us with so much information, whether it's somewhat useless trivia like this or really powerful, interesting information, uh, things about the world that we want to know. But this, the fact that search works at all is a testament to the fact that so many things work on the internet. So what happened during this search? Let's talk about just a couple of, the, a couple of things that happened. So obviously, in order to perform this search, I'm accessing information that's stored on other computers, right? So you know, connectivity, right? The, the basis of the internet itself, the fact that there's this whole network of computers that are actually physically touching each other and connected together. That's what brings this information to me. That's what allows me to, to, to access it, right? Because I don't have this information stored on my own computer. Um, the, the ability of the internet to resolve names. So how do I get to Google in the first place? I just want to point out something. I'm not endorsing any particular search engine. I'm sure that Bing or Yahoo or other search engines would have produced the same results. Um, throughout the class, we use a variety of different search engines. Uh, Google is the one I use the most commonly. right? Um, but I had to be able to find the site and to, actually, to, to launch the search from. right? So there's a lot of name translation that goes on in that process as well. Um, routing information across the internet. So the fact that the internet is connected together doesn't mean that information can get from point A to point B. So how did the information contained in this web page make its way back to me? Right? So that's both routing and reliable transport. So those are really important parts of the internet. Um, how does Google know the answer to this question? So indexing, searching the web, requires indexes that allow Google to answer all sorts of arbitrary queries that you might want to know about the world. Right? Um, so indexing, um, storing all this information requires millions of computers and data centers all over the world. So there's a really interesting story about algorithms for doing search. How do I know what to, how to rank things? How does Google know that when I search for who won the Bachelor of 2015, this is what I want to see? Um, so the ability to rank things, of course, there's really interesting societal questions about how different search engines rank different search results. Um, we also get into issues of privacy um, and identity. Google and other search engines may identify me as I'm performing searches to try to tailor those search results to me, to try to make them more meaningful. Um, but that also exposes me to certain privacy risks because now search companies know what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm a little embarrassed about the fact that I'm looking up who won The Bachelor in 2015. I mean, who doesn't remember that, right? I mean, that was, it was so touching. So, you know, I may not want to know the search engine to know that, but searching requires that, that I expose that information, right? And then, you know, just the fact that all of this information is available online at all. Um, all the content that's out there, and the fact that as I perform this process, and if I started to look through these search results and click on the links, I could probably find out all sorts of information about what happened that season. Um, and all that content, free. So how does this work? How have we come to a place where all of this is possible? Um, and so, you know, as you perform internet searches, as you perform those searches thousands of times a day, just think about the fact, think about everything that's involved. And we're going to try to sort of re-mystify the search process, take it from something that's so commonplace and so easy to something that you appreciate some of the beauty and some of the magic of. And then we're going to spend time explaining every step of the way exactly all the different moving parts and pieces that were required for me to remind myself who won The Bachelorette in 2015. Right, Sean B. Sean B. He won Caitlin's heart. This is a test video. These are the two different channels. One, two, one, two.